by the works we have done. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. oh God, by thy grace, thy grace alone, into thy presence we come, into thy presence we come. comes holy spirit thou art welcome in spirit, thou art welcome in this place holy spirit thou art welcome in this place I greet all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. And how many deem it a great privilege to be believers of this message? Hallelujah. Amen. So my appreciation to Brother Gideon for the invitation. And I hope he has already introduced me. I'm Brother Madiwa from Whitbank. Amen. So I came along with my lovely wife, Sister Idumeling. Amen. Let's get to the business of the day. Amen. Let's turn to Malachi 4. Malachi 4, we're going to read our usual scripture, verse 5 and 6. If found, you can say amen. amen. It reads in this manner, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Revelation 10, 7, these are 
our normal scriptures. I think the scriptures by now we know them off by heart. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants and the prophets. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, this morning we approach your throne of grace. And dear God, we consider it such a, a great privilege in this last hour where the world, dear God, is groping in darkness. But you have sent the light of the hour and you're calling out the bride for the rapture. And dear God, our coming here, we came here not to look at one another, but we came here because it's part of a great preparation because, Lord dear God, we can see the signs of the time that it won't be too long, the atoms of these bodies shall change. Yes. Dear God, as I report for duty, undertake for me. May you hide me, dear God, and use me. And dear God, the emphasis should not be so much on the vessel, but let it be on the message that you want to deliver to your people this morning. When we come to the end of this service, may your name be glorified. Bless our local pastor, Brother Gideon Retif, together with his family and the elders of this church. I commit everything to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you take your seats. I'm just going to try to be as simplistic as I can be. Uh, this morning, I think the old timers would know things that we deemed it to be simple. In the process of time, they become very complex. Now, my, my title this morning, I just want to speak on the message of the hour. It sounds very simplistic, the subject, but as we move along, you'll realize it's not as simple as we we may deem it to be. What we see in the end time, in the process of time, we're beginning to see things coming up in the name of the message, but it is not the message. And my question would be, if God could allow William Brenham to stand on the banister and look at the current state of the message community, and the current stage of message believers, what would he say? Now, there are many things that are happening in the name of William Brenham, but they are not of William Brenham. He has been misquoted many times. Uh, we've seen movements, we've seen isms, and as a result, Brother Gideon, I think, there is a need to bring what I call spiritual hygiene back into the message. To say, what is the message? And what was the message sent for? And what is the objective of this message? And why did God send William Branham in the end time? And I think it is very paramount that we do that, especially given the generational transition. Young ones need to understand what this message is. Even before I get into my notes, this message is not a Pentecostalism. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the revealed weight of the hour. Amen. When you become a message believer, you don't become a better Pentecostal. You've got to be different from Pentecostal. Your life, your dressing, your approach, in everything, there must never be any resemblance to Pentecostalism. Now, Brother Brenham, maybe let me just bring this quotation in the Seven Church Age book. He says, now, we can see that Jesus Christ is revealing himself through the ages by his spirit in the messengers. 
They are as Moses was to the children of Israel. That's why we'll keep on quoting Brother Brenham, because he is leading the third Exodus. They are as Moses was to the children of Israel. As he had the revelation for his day, so each messenger had God's revelation and ministry for that day. Thus, when we see that the messengers are in his hand, we see the Lord identifying himself with these men and granting them his power. It is not enough that he has associated himself with the whole church, which we saw when he was standing amongst the seven golden lampstands. Nor is it even enough that we see the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. For in each age, the church goes astray. And it is not just the laity, but the laity group. Shepherds are wrong as well as sheep. Then God brings himself on the scene as the chief shepherd in the ministries of these seven men to lead his people back to the truth and the abundant power of that truth. God in his people, all his people, for any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And he is the weight. That would be the weight recognized in the people. But he has placed a special leadership in this men of his own choosing. And through the determined counsel of his own will, they appear once in each age. It is the same spirit in them. Amen. Close quotes. Now, what we see, Brother Branham says, it is not just enough to have the fivefold ministry. He says the fivefold ministry, without the dispensational prophet, they are just as lost as the laity. So this morning, if God had not sent Brother Branham in the end time, we ministers were just as lost as the laity. The only hope for each age is God to send his messenger, and that message of that messenger becomes a way of escape for that age. And God does not have multiple ways of escape. There's only one way provided for God for you to, expa- to escape in your age. So th- that means going into the rapture in our age, there is no other entrance point except the message that was given to William Brenham. Amen. And I'd much better say this to you. William Brenham is the prophet in this age, and he remains a prophet until we go into the rapture. And if you want to get into the rapture, get into those messages, read those messages, listen to those tapes. In those messages, there lies a rapturing faith. Don't ever replace the prophet with any personality. I hope that it becomes very, very clear. Now, in this message, what is the attraction on the mountain? Paragraph 35, he says, but in the midst of all of it, Through every age and every prophet that had been and would be, there's going to be a certain amount of people that's predestinated to hear that message. And they will follow it. When God sent Brother Branham in the end time, it was not a matter of Sherlock that maybe per adventure people may feel pity for him and believe in his message. No, when he sent Brother Branham in the end time, he already had the people in the mind who were going to believe in the message of William Brenham. Can you say amen to that? Now, even when he sent Moses, he knew exactly who were the people that were going to follow Moses. Even when Jesus died on the cross, he knew the people that were going to accept that perfect sacrifice. So whenever you see God coming or making a move, there is already the people that he has in mind that are going to be the beneficiaries of that move. And that's why in the end time, it doesn't matter how many critics rise on the scene. They shall be message believers. That for that matter, brother, it doesn't matter how many internet sites criticize Brother Brenham. There are people that were foreordained to believe in this prophet messenger. 
They don't believe it because they were convinced or they were persuaded. They believe because they were predestinated to believe. And I would like to believe that you are in the message because you were foreordained to be in the message. And if you were foreordained to be in the message, no one will take you out of the message. I say no man will take you out of the message. Because you were not called by a man, you were called by God. And that call of God, it was authentic in your heart. And nothing can dilute it. I say nothing can dilute it. This morning you are in church, not to impress Brother Gideon, but because you were called by the Father. He says, those people, those ignore the crowds. They ignore the criticism of the unbeliever. They have no argument with them. They've got one thing to do. That's believe, and to get every bit of it, they can soak it in like Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus. So it means there's going to be crowds. There's going to be critics. But this group that is predestinated will not succumb to the influence of the critics. They will not succumb to the influence of the crowds. We don't follow the crowds. We don't follow the critics. We don't follow the arguments. We don't follow the internet sites. We follow what God has done in our age. Amen. And what God has done in our age, it came by revelation. Amen. It was not in a lecture room. It connected with something in our souls. Amen. You know, when Brother Brenham, when you listen on the tape, and Brother Brenham say, good evening, friends, it provokes a sense of deja vu. You feel like you have heard this voice before. It sounds familiar, you say, but this voice is like this voice has always been there in my life. Why is it a deja vu? It's because this prophet, you don't recognize him to be a prophet here. You recognize him to be a prophet from eternity. And that's why you can recognize him in time. And you and the prophet, what connects you is the revealed weight of the hour. When we follow what Brother Brenham is preaching, we don't follow a man. But we follow the Lord Jesus Christ in a revealed form in the end time. That's what we are feeding on. We are not feeding on William Brenham, but we are feeding on the weight. And you become what you eat. Now, in the message where Christ speak, paragraph 3-0, he says Moses was born in this world, a gifted boy. He was born to be a prophet, a deliverer. He was born with the equipment born in him. As every man that comes into the, into the world is born with this equipment. So everyone that is born was born with an equipment. What is that equipment? Maybe if I were to use an analogy, if suppose, and it may not happen, it's just an example, if immediately after the chair, chair, church you go to the parking bay and you don't find your car where it was parked and you look for it and you don't find it and it has a tracker, the next thing that you are going to, phone, to do, you're going to phone a tracking company and say, can you check my car because I, I don't find it where I had parked it before I came into the church. And what they're going to do, they're going to go into the computer system and they are going to look where for, they are going to locate your car. But if you don't have a tracker, if it was not installed with an equipment, you cannot look for it. You look for it because there is an equipment in the car. You look for it because it is traceable. And they will respond and say, let's look for it because they know that you are their client. So every man and woman was born with an equipment. I'm talking about the people that believe this message. They were lost. They could not be found. Some were Catholics. Some were Pentecostals. Some were Baptists. But in them, there was an equipment. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there came a time where they had to be traced. And the reason they had to be traced is because they were traceable. There was something that could be activated in them that could make them to be traceable. And in order for God to trace them, he sent a prophet messenger, and he arms that prophet messenger with the weight. 
And that prophet goes around the well. He proclaims that weight. That weight is to activate the equipment in men and women that are foreordained to hear his message. And when he came here, hallelujah, some of us, the equipment was activated. I was in a Baptist, you were in a Catholic, but something moved. What was moving? The equipment was activated. And something responded to the call of God. Because in you, there was a divine nature. That was waiting to be activated by the weight. And that's why we are here. Amen. When we say you are a message believer, it's not a new church. It's not a new movement. It's not a new ism. It is the revelation of this son of man in the end time. And we have recognized that revelation. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, the prophet maybe, let me take you to the Samaritan woman. You know, the Samaritan woman in her life, she had nothing that resembled holiness. She was a prostitute. She came from a broken background. I believe that she could not even be allowed to come anywhere near the church because she was a, a marriage wrecker. Until such time that she couldn't even go with other women to the well. She had to go alone. Hallelujah. But now, when the weight was made flesh, the priest called that weight Belizebub. But when the same weight came to the Samaritan woman, there was something within the Samaritan woman that could recognize the weight made flesh. You see, it has, it's not about your background. It's not about your upbringing. It's about predestination. If, let me read to this quotation. I'm getting excited. In the message, the future home, 157. Do you love this message? 157, the prophet says, and there was the priest representing the light. He had learned it from the Bible. He had learned that God was God. He had learned that holiness was right. He was learned that there was a law of God. He had learned it because of intellectual conception. He was born in the right lineage. He was a Levite. He only knew it by intellectual conception. And when the light of the hour, see, he learned it by what had happened, not what was happening. What had happened? When he found what was happening, his denomination said nothing about it. Therefore, he had no representation of it. Now, when you follow up on the message language, representation, it refers to a theophany. The priest, although he was born in the right lineage, although he was holy, although he, was, he had an office that people respected, although he had learned the law, but there was something lacking in his life, representation. What do we mean by representation? When God was there, when he was Elohim, the self-existing one, the Samaritan woman was there as an attribute. Amen. But the priest wasn't there. Hallelujah. When God emoved himself and became the Logos, the Samaritan woman was there. Her theophany was there. But when God became flesh, in the flesh realm, the Samaritan woman was a prostitute. Now in the flesh realm, the priest seemed like a holy man. But when the word was presented... Because the word is a DNA test. You can speak about God. You can sing about God. You can preach about God. But let me present the message of the hour to you. And I will check your reaction to it. And if the DNA confirms that you are part of God, something in you will punctuate amen to the message. But if you are not part of that, you will say, hogwash, I'm not interested in that. Because you lack representation. Today you are here because you heard from your theophany. 
and you recognize the word of the hour to be the eagle's food, and you heard from your theophany. You don't just hear from me, you heard from your theophany. This is an angelic ministry. Hope we are together. Acts 13, 48. The Bible says, after the disciples had proclaimed the word of God, and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. It doesn't say as many believed were ordained to eternal life. Eternal life is not something that you receive. It's something that you've already always had. Amen. Hallelujah. And you believing, you believe because where you come from, you are a believer. I hope we are together here. Brother Brennan is following up on that, on question and answers, paragraph 78. He says in this message, what you are, as I said in the beginning, what you are somewhere else is what you reflect here. So what you are here, it's a reflection of what you are somewhere. If you hate here, that means you've got hatred in the spirit land. And if you love here, it's a reflection of what you are in the spirit land. If you believe here, it shows that you are a believer in the spirit land. And what you are in the spirit land, it gets reflected here. Then people watch you and say you are different. You live different. You talk different. Because why? You reflect the life that you have in the spirit land. They will never. And that is why I say I'm a believer of this message from there. I will believe this message here. And because I believed it there, I believe now. The message is not the new thing. The message is bringing you back to your original state. You have always been a child of God. But because of spiritual amnesia, you lost the memory of your identity. But the message is here to remind you, you are not a sinner. Like a Samaritan woman, she was not a prostitute. She was a daughter of God. But amnesia made her to be a prostitute. I hope we are together. He said, what you are and what your celestial or terrestrial body is up yonder, what your celestial body is somewhere else, is what you are reflecting back here. In the spirit land, what you are is what you are here. That's why this morning there is so much taking place in the spirit land than in the physical world. Hallelujah. I believe that this gathering tonight, this morning, it's a supernatural gathering. I believe that you have invited the supernatural God to be here. And I believe that you believe that supernatural angels are here. And if you don't believe that, then that means the whole gathering is in vain. It might as well be turned into a lecture room. But the church is not a lecture room. The church is a supernatural gathering. And Brother Branham said, even this morning, your spiritual body is sitting next to you. And he said, your spiritual body can charge your terrestrial body, and give it a healing. That's why sometimes you come to church depressed, withdrawn, despondent, and they sing a song, and they sing the next song, and all of a sudden, you feel some warmth. You feel, you feel that things are getting better. What is happening? You are being recharged by your spiritual body. And as the minister of the gospel comes, and he preaches, something in you moves. You raise your hand. Why are you raising your hand? It's because your theophany raised to the hand. And your terrestrial body had to follow suit. And if we become very honest, your terrestrial body didn't want to come to church this morning. You woke up and felt a pain. And said, do I really have to go? And there was a headache. Do I really have to go? There was something that went haywire. Do I have really, do I have really to, to go? But all of a sudden, you fell to the push Amen. that we must go to the house of God. Amen. You know, sisters, uh, you would understand, it's like a pregnant woman. They've got cravings. They wake up in the middle of the night and say, I'm craving for dark chocolate. Brother, you're going to go and get it. It's not her fault. It's because within her, there is another body craving for that chocolate. 
and her body becomes subject to the cravings of that body that is within her. This morning I'm here, not because of this body, but there is another body that had the spiritual craving for the word of God, and that's why I'm here to fulfill the cravings of that inner body. And that's why we ministers, when we come and minister to you, we had much better be careful. Because you know, when a woman is pregnant and you give her something that she is allergic to, she's going to throw up. She may have loved a brown bread, but all of a sudden, she doesn't want brown bread anymore. And if she forces to eat brown bread, she's going to throw up. Because now the new body dictates, we don't need brown bread, we need white bread. And this morning, the bride of Jesus Christ is pregnant. And she's pregnant with the body, and that body is craving for the weight. That's why this morning, I cannot give you psychology. Because you are not craving for psychology. I cannot give you education. You are not craving for education. I cannot give you creeds and dogmas. You are not craving for that. But you are craving for the revealed word of the hour that has been revealed in our time. That's why we become very diligent when we come before the service and to minister to the bride of Jesus Christ. We want to make sure the diet must be correct. We make sure the ingredients must be correct. And when we call Brother Brenham and say, Brother Brenham said, Brother Brenham said, we are checking if the ingredient is correct. Because if it's not what the prophet said, you're going to reject it. You're not here this morning for the eloquence of a man. But you are here because you are looking for the revealed word of the hour. And somebody say amen to that. Let me say the statue of a perfect man. Paragraph 172. The prophet of God says, we are not building an organization. This one I wish it can be. It's something that must echo through the entire message community. We are not building an organization. Organizations have failed and they will not take us to the promised land. And we came out of them not to get into a new organization. We rejected the organization then, and we still rejected the organization today. I said, this message shall never be denominated. I beg to thee, for they will denominate it after we are gone. But as long as we are here, the message will reject anything that would want to denominate it. It's like an ocean. The message cleanses itself. We are not an an organization. I'm not here this morning to build an organization. Christ never sent me to build organization. Christ sent me to build individuals. Hallelujah. To the stature of Jesus Christ. That they might be the powerhouse and the dwelling place of the spirit by his weight. The message is here to make you a dwelling, a powerhouse, a dwelling house for the Spirit of God by His way. See, build the individual to that place, not to build an organization to a greater denomination, but build the individual to sons and daughters of God. That's the idea. So, we, we appreciate good buildings, Brother Gideon. We appreciate a good audiovisual system. But the message is not that far. The message is here to build individuals. When all is said and done, the question would be, what is your relationship with Christ? Have you become a dwelling house of the Spirit of God? And we're going to watch. There, are, there is evidence when you have become a dwelling house of the Spirit of God. And I'm going to come into that. He says in the church age, he says not for one moment do I bring a a message to the people that they may follow me. We are not following William Brenham. Hallelujah. But we are following the one that was in William Brenham. That's why when William Brenham is not here, the message carries on. Hallelujah. The ministry has got the visible part and the invisible part. 
Even after Moses was taken of the scene, the ministry continued. Even after Brother Brenham is taken off the scene, the ministry continues. Our eyes were not on the man, but our eyes were on the one that was with the man. Amen. Although the man is no longer here, but that angel is here. Amen. I say that angel is here. Amen. He says, not for one moment do I bring a message to the people that they may follow me or join my church or start some fellowship or organization. I have never done that and will not do that now. I have no interest in those things, but I do have an interest in the things of God and people. If I can accomplish just one thing, I will be satisfied. That one thing is to see established a true spiritual relationship between God and men. Where in men, become new creations in Christ, filled with his spirit, and live according to his weight. Amen. The message is here to make sure that you are a new creature, hallelujah, and you are filled with his spirit, and you live according to his weight. Amen. I hope we are together. Amen. Now coming to you, becoming a dwelling place of the spirit of God. Brother Brenham says in the message, is this the sign of the end time? Paragraph 2-0. He says, one of the mysteries that must be revealed in the end time, it must be the mystery of the baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation. But the person of Christ performing in you the same works that he did. You know, what we call, what I see people calling the Holy Ghost today, it is not the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. A woman falling, rolling on the floor. It's not the Holy Ghost. It may happen in a church, but it's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy, there is a certain way that the Holy Ghost behaves when the Holy Ghost is in a person. Are you with me this morning? Why is it critical that we must have the revelation or this mystery must be broken in the end time? Of the baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation. You know, they asked Brother Brenham a question. If I've got the Holy Ghost, will I know? And Brother Brenham in that message, he says, can a woman be pregnant and not know it? And Brother Brenham links the baptism of the Holy Ghost to pregnancy. Now, if you are a student of the message, then you would understand that Eve got pregnant by sensation. But Mary did not get pregnant by sensation. And this bride, like Mary, she will be pregnant with the weight without sensation. Amen. I hope we are together here. Amen. Now, when the prophet was here, I want to show you the effect of the Holy Ghost. When he was in Bloemfontein, in the message, hear ye him, paragraph 23. It says, in the dark lands of Africa, where the Ethiopian women come to my meeting by the thousands, raw heathens, blanket natives, who did not know which is right hand or left, coming with just a little cloud over the front of them here, on a string around their waist, their whole body exposed, but when God came down in his power and saved them from sin, no one said a thing about clothes. But when they started to leave the audience, I stood looking weeping. Women folded their hands like this to cover themselves so they could get out to put some clothes on. Then we call ourselves civilized. We call ourselves Christians with the Holy Ghost. Shame on you preaching liberation of women. Brother, we ought to preach liberation from sin. God deliver us from that stuff. Notice, if a raw heathen that don't know right from left hand, the Holy Spirit itself teaches her that she is naked, then you claim to have the Holy Ghost stripping off everything that, that the Lord let you do. There is something wrong somewhere. So I'm showing you 
Those women came to Brother Brenham's meetings, and most of them were heathens. They were in their traditional regalia. And as soon as the Holy Spirit came upon them, without anybody speaking about clothes, they covered to themselves. Now, today you want to tell me you can come to a message church and a minister preaches and a woman rolls on the floor and claims to be slain in the spirit. I reject that. That is the spirit of Pentecostalism. It has no role in the message of the hour. Because when the message comes upon a sister, it makes her to be modest. When the message comes upon a brother, it makes a brother to be modest. I don't watch what you say. I watch how you are living. Because the Holy Spirit is God himself living his life through a believer. I hope we are together. And outside the message of the hour, there is no true baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not a slip of tongue. I'll repeat so that you hear me. You cannot claim to have the Holy Ghost in an age and be outside the parameters of the message. If it is a genuine Holy Spirit, it will drive you to the messenger of the hour. I hope we are together here. And once you are into the message, again, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you must check because we need to take it further. Because Brother Brennan makes a statement, you may be baptized with the Holy Ghost every hour and die and go to hell. And somebody said, how is it possible? Because when the Holy Ghost, you have to check the realm at which that Holy Ghost touches. If it touches your body, you get healed. But it doesn't mean that you are in. You can, be, you can walk out of a wheelchair by the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you don't make your life right, then it's between you and your maker. And you can come to church and they sing good songs and you feel, we feel the warmth of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit ministering to your spirit. But when you leave church and you don't do anything about your life and you will die, it's between you and your maker. But brother, when the Holy Ghost baptizes your soul, we can say you have reached a point of no return. God can never disown you there. You are sealed in. Until the day of your redemption. Your parcel can have, the seal cannot be broken until the parcel reaches the final destination. And I had much better say this morning, there are people in the message, they are infallible. They will never go back to the world. Because why? Something is holding them. Do I have witnesses in the building? Where the devil has thrown a trial after a trial, a problem after a problem, a sickness after a sickness. But many years later, you are still raising your hand and saying, let the name of the Lord be glorified. What makes you to be like that? It's not your human ability. It's not your human effort. It's God himself in the believer. Are you with me? Show any man. Show me any man and any woman that you claim they are spiritual. Let me present the message to them and check their reaction. Because the word is the DNA test. It, it searches you all the way. It goes beyond your parents. It goes beyond the generation that came before you. It goes all the way back to the back part of the mind of God. And if the word finds you there, the word will find you here. But if it doesn't find you there, I can preach until I'm blue in the face. You're not going to see it. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Brother Branham says in the exposition of the seven church ages, thank you for reprinting the seven church age book. It's a good book. Amen. He says, now we have been constantly saying, that the true evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is not jumping up and down. It's not shouting. It's not rolling on the floor. But the woman is going to give you what is it all about. It says we have constantly been saying that the true evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is for, is for the believer, excuse me, is for the believer to receive the weight for the age in which he lives in. 
to receive the word for the age in which he lives in. You know, most of the time, I've learned over the process of time that a lot of people thought the denomination refers it to organizations that they have left. But they don't realize that beyond that, denomination is a spirit. You can, you can leave your old church and be in the message, but still have the spirit from the old church. I, you know, it's seen that. People becoming message Catholics, message Pentecostals. You know, Brother Brennan makes a profound statement. He says, I'm glad that God got hold of me before the church did. And I say, I'm glad Brother Brennan had no point of reference. The church rejected him in the early stages because if you have stayed much longer in a church, there is a tendency that as you move on the Christian journey and things become difficult, then your point of reference becomes where you used to be. In my old church, that's how we used to be. We need nothing from your old church. Amen. And we need you to be delivered from the spirit of your old church. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Another thing that I see, and this one I would call it traditionalism, where you move from a denomination, you come into the message, but that spirit keeps on lingering on. Another thing that I see that is becoming dominant is intellectualism. People have uh, I've got the intellectual conception until they think they can correct a brother Brenham. Who are you to collect, uh, correct brother Brenham? Where were you when I was in my old church? It's not your message that called me. It's the message that God sent through the prophet. And you were as hopeless as I was. And you were as helpless as I was. And we were all, all on the same rescue team. But now you turn around and you say you want to save me? I beg to differ. Amen. Intellectualism. And another thing that I've spoken about is Pentecostalism. You said I'm free to preach. There is not even one single message of T.D. Jakes that has got a rapture in faith. There is not even one single message of Credo Dollar that has got a rapture in faith. The only message in this generation that has got the rapture in faith is a vindicated message by the pillar of fire. And I said, you become what you eat. Amen. If you eat T.D. Jakes privately, we're going to see his spirit upon your life. Amen. And if you are a minister, it will show in your sermons. I need nothing from the denominations. The message of the hour is enough. Amen. I wanted young people to say a bigger amen on that one. Amen. Amen. Let's come here. Church age book. He says, if you are true seat, you will hear the weight. The weight will never offend you. Amen. It's quite amazing when Brother Brennan preached marriage and divorce, we are told there were quite a number of people, women, that were packing their handbags and leaving the meetings as he was ministering. But what made other women to remain in the building? As others were leaving, what made others to say, hang on, let, me, let us wait and hear him out? It's something, something was pulling them. Amen. And this message will reveal your true identity. Amen. As two brothers read the same book, and another one said, I don't want this book, he calls me a vulture. But he said, I read the same book, he calls me an eagle. Because the message will always reveal your identity. Amen. Sisters, when they read the message, they are blessed because they see themselves in the message. Amen. If you are a true seed, you will hear the word. The Spirit will baptize you into the body of Christ, filling you and empowering you. And you will receive the word for your day and age. Amen. See, it keeps on repeating. You will receive the word for your day and for your age. 
see how clear the true evidence becomes when the word is revealed to you. That's why I say the word has got to be revealed. Then we check your reaction towards the word. Now, I'm coming back to say what is the message of the hour? Some think the message of the hour is for us to wear long dresses. Muslims wear much longer ones. If this, that is the message of the hour, Muslims are much closer than we are. Are you with me? Some brothers may say, the message of the hour is for us not to have long hair. Uh, the Shaolins in China have got more shorter hair than we do. So, it means we need to, and that's what we need to teach our young people. What is the message of the hour? Some think the message of the hour is William Brenham. That's why they have centered the whole thing around the man. Here he said this, here he said that, because they only see a man. But the message of the hour is not William Brenham. Right. Hallelujah. Then Brother Brenham says in this message, the anointed ones at the end time, 269. He says, I want you to notice this show. You that listen to this tape. You might have thought today that I was trying to say that about myself. Being that I was packing this message, I have no more to do with it than nothing. No more, just a voice. Amen. Brother Brenham had never had anything to do with it. He was just a voice. And my voice, even against my better judgment, I wanted to be a trapper. But it's the will of my father that I declare to do and determine to do. He carries on. I wasn't the one that appeared down on the river. Amen. Hallelujah. I was only standing there when he appeared. You know what gives me goosebumps? is because even this morning, we know it was not him, but the one that appeared next to him, he's here to this morning. I'm not the one that performs these things and foretells these things that happen as perfect as they are. I'm only one that's near when he does it. I was only a voice that he used to say it. It wasn't what I knew. It's what I just surrendered myself to that he spoke through. It isn't me. It wasn't the seventh angel. Oh, no. It was the manifestation of the Son of Man. It's not a man. It's God. Amen. The angel was not the Son of Man. He was the messenger from the Son of Man. This son of man is Christ. He is the one that you are feeding on. This morning we are not feeding on William Renam, but we are feeding on the son of man. Let me put it this way. John was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ. I want to, I want to paint a picture. Of how when God pulls the predestinated seed, he doesn't make things easier. Sometimes he makes things so complex that they are caught only by the predestinated seed. In your message and unveiling of God, Brother Moses say, sometimes certain things are said deliberately to thin down. And it drives others out. He says, it's deliberate. Now, John was, the, was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ. I want to paint a picture. He comes, he preaches the message. The Messiah is coming and I will introduce him. Because he was a prophet. The way it cometh to the prophet. Then later, you know that John and Jesus were cousins. John was six months senior to Jesus. That means Jesus and John must have played together. That means some of the clothes of John may have been handed down to Jesus. But John comes into the ministry. He says, I will introduce Messiah. 
and he disrupts the religious order of the day. He tells them, come out of your churches. Because the minister of the time, Messiah will be on the scene. And there comes a time where John turns around. He introduces Jesus as the Messiah. And the same John said, I knew him not. Now he introduces his own cousin as a Messiah. Brother Gideon, I wonder how many would have remained. Because people would have gone and said, but this brother said he doesn't know him. But now he's introducing his own cousin. Some would have left church. I can imagine brothers would have had a, a, a brother's meeting. It, no, it's a family business. Are you here? Some would have gone and created a website. John the Baptist, a liar. Are you with me? John knew the body of Jesus. But the scriptures say, the Lord that you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. John grew up with the temple. But when he saw the one that sent him come into the temple, it must have wowed John and said, I didn't know that my cousin is the Messiah. If it was difficult in the first coming, how much more in the second coming? John says, behold, the Lamb of God. He points at Jesus. But in our generation, God says, William Brenham, you're going to forerun me. You're going to introduce me. But this time around, I'm not going to use any other body. I'm going to use your body. I'm going to hide without you, behind your flesh, William Brenham. And you're going to introduce me to the people. And you're not going to say you are him. Because you are not him, but I'm going to be in you, but you're going to introduce me. <laughs> then Brother Brandon say, God always veils himself. God always hides behind a veil. And he say, all this, yes, I veiled the pillar of fire in me. Then the predestinated son were able to look and say, this son of man is hiding within a son of man. I asked the brother this morning to give me water. He brought me a bottle. If I could have said, brother, don't give me the bottle, I need water. He would have been amazed. Because when water is in the bottle, it becomes water. I can't have water without the bottle. William Branham was the bottle. Water was the deity. Amen. So you can have the deity and reject William Brenner. But the bottle is not water. William Brenner is not God, but God was in William Brenner. That's what it's all about. So my question this morning, did you just see a man? Did you just see a man from Kentucky? Or did you see the one that was in the man? And you can only see the one that was in the man if the one that was in the man this morning is in you. Because there's no longer now a, a, a one-man ministry. It's a body ministry. Same God that was in Brother Brenham is in Brother Gideon this morning. It's in me, it's in my sister. It's the deity. But the body is not the deity. The deity was in the body. Are you with me? Yeah. I hope we are together. Now, Brother Branham says, in this message, standing in the gap. Paragraph 82. He says, now, I didn't know at the time that they were taking pictures of that. It was the picture of the cloud. It's there at the back. Sent it to where? Maybe just to tell you about this cloud. There's a brother that came across this cloud when he was at university. And they were wondering what type of cloud is this. And they researched with the lecturer and said, but what is this? And they couldn't find the answers. 
And after university, he graduated, and he was looking for a job. And while he was looking for a job, he became a street vendor, and he would move from house to house selling stuff. And he went to a brother's house, and he knocked. And as the brother opened the door, this man lost the focus of the man that opened the door. His eyes were now fixed on the wall. And says, this man said, can I help? He said, forget why I'm here. I want to know what is this. Because I've seen this at university. We studied about this. We looked at it. We couldn't come to the conclusion what type of cloud is this. But today as you open the door and I saw this cloud, I saw a picture of a man. I, they can't find answers at university. But when revelation strikes you, you get answers. He said, now, I didn't know at the time that they were taking pictures of that. Sent his way. As the angels lowered themselves from heaven to bring the message. So this message does not come from the United States of America. It comes from heaven. And the seven angels lowered themselves to give Brother Brenham a message. So, even now, I've said to my brethren in America, even if you leave the message, we are not leaving the message. Because this is not an American product. This is a heavenly product. This has got no counter of origin effect. This comes from the Father himself. And we recognize where this word comes from. That's why the message of the hour, it is the revelation of the son of man by a son of man in our time. And if you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will recognize this message. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Amen. We believe that message. Amen. It's very different from the rest of the religious realms. It's very different from what the Christian realm believes in, what they follow. I want to say it this morning like this. I believe if you don't believe this message, you are believing a diminished God. Because this God revealed himself like he's never revealed himself in this day for us to see so clearly. Amen. Thank you, Brother Madiba, for coming. I trust you enjoyed that. You know, uh, some of the quotes and the scriptures are things that you know and you've repeated, but it's so fresh every time, isn't it? It's just wonderful that the message does not age. Amen. This is the final message to the final age. There's nothing going to come beyond this. This is the ultimate of God's revelation. What a privilege. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. Let's stand as we sing that together this morning. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. They were hidden from the wise and revealed to those who I'm so glad you touched my eyes that I might see. Oh, what a privilege this morning that you can see. Amen. You know, the scripture tells us in the days of Jesus, he already told them, said many before you have yearned to see the things that you see and have not seen them. As we come through the seven church ages, we realize that believers in those ages yearn to see the things that you see and did not see them. 
But now we see them by His grace. Hallelujah. We've seen the supernatural in our day. God Himself has come our way. Hallelujah. We've seen the supernatural in our day. Oh God Himself has come our way. alive in our day. We see the supernatural in our day. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God himself has come our way. We follow the pillar of fire and the cloud that takes us higher. The word of God is alive. Supernatural in our day For God Himself has come our way We follow the river of fire And the cloud that takes us higher The Word of God is alive in our day We see the supernatural raise our hands just give him praise this morning what a privilege this morning lord that you've shown us beyond the realm of the physical you've let us recognize the supernatural the presence of god in this last day a word that leads us into realms that have never been known a word that pulled us out out of denomination come out of her my people lord we left the old thing behind because we recognize that eagle food what a privilege this morning to the Lord stand, beholding what we can behold. We thank you for open eyes, ears that can hear, a predestinated heart to recognize from the soul the presence of the living God, the realities of the word. We appreciate you so much. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. We bless your name. Your predestinated world can never be defeated. And we're so grateful that you called us before the world began. What a people we are this morning, elected by your grace to be in the message of the hour, to be the manifestation of that message. How we appreciate you. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is alive in our day because we've seen oh we've seen the supernatural in our day thank you Lord oh God himself has come our way we follow the pillar of fire and a cloud that takes us higher the word of God is alive what a privilege there's many people who live in this world but he has chosen us what a tremendous blessing little chorus says I am one of the few I am one of the few and by faith in God's word I can claim it though the way may seem long and the opposition strong and it will be there and there will be times when you think we should have reached the end of the journey by now but there's something that will hold us regardless of what takes place hallelujah one of the few oh one of the few and by faith in god's word i can claim it though the way may seem long
give the Lord a hand this morning. Blessed be His name. He's given us such a powerful message in this day. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. Amen. I trust you were listening right through. Because that message is to a predestinated people. A people that were ordained to eternal life. God made the decisions. You know, so many times we credit ourselves for so much. But we've seen, as we've been studying on the sovereignty of God, it's, it's Him. He's the great one. And when you find yourself a predestinated seed, that there's just a gratefulness, a thankfulness for what God has granted to us. Amen. In closing, can we sing, I'm only in this message by grace. Hallelujah. I'm only in this message by grace. That's our testimony, Lord. It is only by your grace. Hallelujah. God, my good that we have done. Ain't in this place. I don't know how my Lord God shows me, but I'm thankful. Raise your hands to him, confess that I'm only, I'm only in this message because of the grace of God. Hallelujah, blessed be your name, thank you Jesus. It is only by grace that I... I'm only in this message. Oh, I'm only in this message by grace. It is only by grace that I'm in this place. I don't know how my Lord God chose me. But I'm thankful anyway. I'm only in this message by grace. Amen. I think it was Wednesday night we read where Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. God has given us a grace to be used, to be blessed by, to live by. What a grace. What an amazing grace. We thank the Lord for His Word. Thank our brother Madiba and his wife for joining us this morning. I'm sure you enjoyed the Word of God, refreshed in the soul. Amen. Just something to just face the enemy fresh with this morning. What a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And I have certainly enjoyed the presence of the Lord. May He bless you. We come together at 5 this afternoon for our communion and foot washing service. And look forward to having you back with us. Brother Paul Gonzalez, if you'll come and just dismiss us in a word of prayer. Let's keep praying for one another. For bearing one another. Lifting each other up. And singing spiritual songs to one another. And raising the name of God high in our lives. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for your goodness. So thankful, Lord. So thankful, Lord God, that you've chosen us, Lord. Mm. Before the foundation of the world, Lord, Hallelujah. in your thoughts as attributes, Lord God. Lord, we know, God, we got that representation. We know, Lord Jesus, that by grace, Lord, it just makes us humble, Lord God. Humble, Lord, that we, you chose us. But, Lord, how glad we are, how, how satisfied we are this morning, Lord Jesus, that once again, Lord, you've come down and you've spoken to us, Lord. We just want to worship you and appreciate you, love you, Lord, and, and say, God, that, 
Lord, we're just so, so excited, Lord Jesus, by what you are doing in our day, Father. Lord, we, we, our words just don't, aren't enough, Lord, just to, to say, dear God, how much we love you. And Lord, we're just looking forward to eternity with you, with one another, Lord. God, that's what is in our hearts right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, and as you came down, Lord, to, learn, to come in this hour, Lord, in a vessel of clay, Lord Jesus, through William Barron Branham, Lord God, so too, Lord Jesus, may you take your place of abode in our hearts, the hearts of the bride, Lord Jesus, and, Lord God, come and fulfill your word that is spoken of us in this day, Lord Jesus. Father, we also, as we leave, Lord, we got Brother Sam in our hearts, Lord Jesus, and as the, as the family prays one more time, Lord Jesus, may you heal his body, Lord, and we may hear him on this side once again, crying out to you as he always does, Lord Jesus. We just love him and appreciate him, and we ask God that you would touch his body once more time, Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Lord a pilgrim sojourning A land that's not my own Seeking to quench the thirst within And then a miracle of life 